folks. So um, hopefully the screen recording is going to save okay. I don't know. The computer is messing up a little bit on me, but you can see this was recorded um, well early this morning. It was last night to me, but it was early this morning when this was recorded. And it's kind of interesting because there's a streak that comes through here too. And right there's the object that pops in at the very end of this time lapse. And I did pull out some of the frames. I want to show it just a little bit closer, but there's another streak through there. And at the time when this was recording, I was standing out there and I actually saw, yeah, it pops in right there. And I actually saw a very bright streak um, that came through the sky and then it appeared on the time lapse as well. So yeah, right there it is. And I'm pretty sure it's the same object that popped into view on the video from the 5th. And now I think I had stated in my video that it was from the night before, but it wasn't. Um, this previous thing that popped into the time lapse here was actually from, um, I believe it was the 5th. Let me find the original video for that one real quick so I can double check. 56, 59, July 5th. So it wasn't, you know, two days in a row. This first one where it pops through, and I'm pretty sure it's the same object, and I'll show you what I'm talking about because I can put it into the editor, but um, I had stated before that it was two nights in a row, and it wasn't. The original, the first one occurred back on the 5th, and then there was this one from very early this morning or last night, according to my, you know, time frame. But this streak came through, too, and I was really hoping that the camera would pick it up, and it looks like it did, and it's down in that uh, corner there to the left. Yeah, right there. It pops in just before the light from Polaris passes in that spot right there, and then I don't... Yeah, it's. I swear, it's the same object, so... Let me go back to this frame here, yeah. And I want to lighten this up a little bit. Bear with me, folks. I'm going to expose it a little bit and brighten it up. And that does kind of make that pop. Yeah, there's a streak. You can faintly see it up here in the top of the frame. And then here's where it lit up. And this would have been, according to my perspective anyway, when I was looking up towards the north of our location, it, it appeared on the lower horizon line, according to my view, when I saw the really bright uh, streak come across. And it's coming right across there. And I'm pretty sure that that's a plane, but I I don't know. It could very well have been just two separate things flying through there, because that looks very similar to um, what I've seen before with some of the stars, because if you look close, you can kind of see where it looks like there's this helix, where this is, like, spinning. I don't know. Um, but this this here, I'm pretty certain that that is the same object um, that, was present, that presented itself in uh, this video here from the fifth oh let me go to the still image of that that's the frame there's the frame for it and i'm gonna go in here really quick into the editing program bear with me here and now i'm gonna go down here and like rotate it so that it's facing like right like the same type of direction that the other one was that from the other night let me see here and Hang on, let me save that really quick. Bear with me. Stick with me, okay? There it is. Now let's make that smaller. Let's close that. And then zoom in on this one. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it kind of looks like it could be the same little object coming through just at a different angle because in this one it was facing like up and down but yeah i don't know i'm uh, just aiming the camera and recording it that's all i'm doing really and i'm attempting to share but as you can see too you know polaris is really migrating further out from the center here so it's getting pulled out maybe that's what this whole thing here is all about it's like a, a radio frequency uh, type of uh, an apparatus or spacecraft that is attempting to influence the energy from Polaris and pull it. I don't know. It's weird. It's definitely adding, being added to, you know, my list of really weird things that the camera has captured. And it just goes along with, you know, me kind of you know suspecting that they are using some of these ai programs and stuff to you know try to control the flow of information before it ever even makes it to the public domain you know talk about having control of the narrative maybe before the internet it sure was easy for them to control narratives and for them to control the flow of information especially when it comes to science 
you know, if it isn't peer reviewed, forget about it. And chances are likely if it's peer reviewed, then it's one of those papers and one of those things that normally probably wouldn't set very well through public opinion. So they create all of this, you know, genius fluff around the narratives when they pitch it to the public. So everybody will think, oh, there's a really smart person here. Yeah, I think I believe what that person believes because they're really, really smart. And all these other really smart people said that, you know, they reviewed it and they said that it, it, it's, you know, yep, I'm going to believe that. And if you're not peer reviewed, you don't, you don't get published. And in some cases, when you present information and ideas and theories, you just disappear. And I could see how that would be very easy for them to make people disappear years ago. And how they're doing it now. Look at how they're doing it now. They're just censoring people. And right now they're like right on our own devices and all of our tools and communication lines that we're, you know, should be allowed to use without having be spied on. And it, it would be very easy, much, much easier now, actually, when, when we really think about it, to control the flow of information because everybody uses all of these devices and uses these platforms. I mean, years ago, they could just make somebody disappear. Now they have to, you know, develop all these programs and algorithms to spy on and follow people and babysit people who do things and interact with the World Wide Web and the World Wide Net. It's just, yeah, whatever. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but there, it wouldn't surprise me if they weren't gearing up for another really massive, really big, huge distraction. You know, there's a reason why Trump is running and there's all of this attention being given to the 45th president slash 47 president because 45 is nine and uh 47 is 11. Now whether that's because trump's campaign and the people surrounding trump are trying to expose this incredibly uh diabolical uh, regime that's operating in the shadows behind the scenes or they're in on it and this is their way of exposing it you know because they have to put the truth out there like everything most stuff is hidden right in plain sight and those numbers 45 and 47 9 11 it's just there's some kind of a connection there, some kind. I'm not sure whether it's nefarious or whether it's because there is some level of exposure going on by good actors, but I just find it really hard to believe there are too many good actors in, in influential, influential positions, um, you know, that can sway such a large portion of the public. I just don't know. I'm on the fence about a lot of that stuff. All I know is that my camera is capturing some weird ass shit and I'm just trying to share it with you all so that you can keep a heads up because who really knows what they're really planning to do? Because right now, with the advanced technologies and the advanced research, research being, um, or um, damn it, researching and development, researching and developing. Hey, wait, what did I say? I said researching. Yeah, there we go. That's my new word. They've been researching, okay, researching and developing. That's my new word, researching um, newer technologies for newer types of propul propulsion. Oh my gosh, I cannot talk right now. They've been developing newer propulsion techniques and newer um power generation systems and power harvesting systems and solar collection systems um for for quite a while but they've been making major investments into stuff like that lately and if they're attempting to shift things and move things and change and redirect energies and the flow of our electromagnetic field and stuff like that they really shouldn't be allowed to do it for one and i don't consent but number two if they are would they tell us i mean they're far more advanced with some of the technologies they're playing with we don't get to see really what we won't see really what they're developing, researching and working on right now in the universities with all of the brightest and most geniuses people in the world. We won't see any of that, not for at least another 10 to 20 years, at least. And what we're experiencing now and what we're exposed to now and allowed to have access to now is stuff that they've already had in play and in use for the military and for the government for decades. You know, we're the last in line when it comes to being allowed uh, and, and being privy to science and some of the researching and developing the researching of some of these, you know, what would be considered pseudoscience projects and things where they are attempting to harness energy in ways they've never done before. And they're interfering. My, my issue is they're interfering with the energy that's flowing from our skies. They're interfering. My goodness, I can't talk. I need to just end this video. They're just interfering with things that they really don't have any business interfering. And I don't remember it ever being up for a vote. Just like these looms that have been drifting over the middle of the U.S. for oh, going on three weeks now. I don't consent. I don't care if you're not directly over my location. What are you doing up there? Because you're high enough up. They're up at like 60,000 feet. They're up high enough where whatever they're doing has an, a, a fallout effect, so to speak, on the entire North American continent and Canada and probably Mexico too. I mean, there's shit in their equipment and their sensors and everything expand out for miles and miles and miles. Okay. So they're just, they're attempting to harness and redirect energy and they don't have any business doing it as far as I'm concerned anyway. And really, some of these projects are ridiculous. 
they want to tell us that we have um, a food insecurity issue and there's a, a very large homeless population and all of that stuff going on. But yet you want to give some university somewhere like uh, $80 million to research and develop, um, do some researching into growing plants in a simulated Mars environment, right? Let's grow food in a simulated Mars environment just to see if we can do it. But never mind that these people that work on these projects have got starving children that go to bed hungry at night in their own fucking neighborhoods. I mean, give me a break. Some things where science goes is just not, it's just whacked. The priorities are whacked as far as I'm concerned. But there you go, folks. The latest little Polaris anomaly going on here with this little object and uh, whatever. They're just going to keep on taking the liberty to do whatever they want to up there in them outer spaces, aren't they? And how many people really look up at the sky at night and pay attention to the stars and the movement of the stars? Really? And the ones that do, that see stuff like this, if they're not pitching a narrative that they want to be followed, then there you go. It's like being peer-reviewed, you know? If you're not following the common consensus and what the common uh, conclusions are from the you know current scientific community, then whatever, you're just a conspiracy theorist and you get booted out of their sphere, out of their sphere so, so to speak. I can't talk. I need to end this video anyway. Stay safe and mindful, folks. Know that I appreciate you and that you matter very much to me. And know that I'm still keeping my camera rolling. So whatever happens, hopefully I'll be able to capture it if it's something real major. I mean, this to me is definitely something that would, I would think, interest a lot of people who, you know, keep track of the stars. But I don't know. Whatever. Permit the people of the world to see one television program at the same time throughout the world. Think about that kind of communication and think about the opportunity that will provide. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will